Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? So as you can see, by my lack of intro, <laughs> this is going to be a serious video. And um, I was just in the mirror and I was like checking my shirt and checking my beard because every time I sit down to attempt to do a serious video, I watch the video back and I always have like one hair right here <laughs> or one hair hanging off my beard when I just trimmed my beard and shaved my neck. Um, so I hope that that's not the case today and I hope that there is nothing that is distracting, like a hair on my shirt or something like that, because this is a very important video for me to make today. Um, and this is actually a video that I have thought about making for uh, quite some time, and I will explain to you in just a second um, why I chose to make this video today. And um, I, it, it is highly scripted. I have the entire thing all scripted out right here on my phone. Um, so I just want to kind of like read each part that I have written and then I'm going to uh, respond to some of these parts in here. But before I get into that, I just want to say um, thank you guys so much for the love and the support and the compassion and the kindness. Um, that you gave me on my video yesterday. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I was kind of nervous to come out and talk about things that I had addressed years ago in videos um, and again, attempt to take accountability for it. Um, I think that I have demonstrated in my videos and um, in my interactions with people and um, you know, in my personal life as well, um, and by my work with uh, my sponsor in a 12-step program and continuing to work steps and an intensive work with a therapist, two therapists at this point, um, that I believe that I have shown change and growth. Apparently, there are a lot of people out there that, that don't believe that, or there are a few people out there that don't believe that, and, um, and that's a little bit what this video is going to be about today. But needless to say, yesterday, I was nervous to, to make that video because um, I was bringing attention to um, some things that were being brought back up again that I had already addressed four years ago um, that uh, I wasn't sure if there were people that were watching my videos that were even aware of that. And actually, I got a comment on one uh, on my video yesterday and somebody said, you know, like I really appreciate, like I didn't know about this and I really appreciate you bringing up and being willing to continue to take accountability for it and bring it up again risking that somebody might not know about what happened and you're sending them in the direction of the video that you posted four years ago and you're talking about it again and you're taking accountability again and wow that's really impressive and I just want to say I really appreciate that and I would say about 95% of the comments were really kind and I, I just want to say I really really appreciate it on a video that I was uh, very nervous to make um, it really meant the world to me I, you have no idea um, and uh, again, I'm nervous to make this video, but I also feel empowered to make this video today. Um, I have ran it by several people and asked them if they thought that I should make this video and if the timing was right. Several of these people are YouTubers and several of these people are part, and I will explain this, of the reason why I am making this video. Um, so let's get into my points. Um, First of all, uh, I got several comments yesterday saying that people are tired of me talking about the same people. Listen, I get tired of talking about the same people too, okay? I know that I talk about the same four to five people on my channel. Um, you know, sometimes, I, I, well, I shouldn't say that I get tired of talking about them too. I don't always. Like, for me, it's kind of like watching a reality show. And so, I enjoy following them and, you know, uh, sharing my opinion and giving um, advice based on my own experience in my life and things like that. Um, but I would love to talk about other things as well, you know, so, um, today we're going to do that. Today we are going to talk about, uh, internet trolls. We're going to talk about haters. We're going to talk about people who are intent on making my life miserable and have attempted to do so for quite some time, years actually, uh, to be, to be completely honest, years on end. And everything that I am going to talk about in my video today, um, I have, uh, factual evidence to back this up. I'm not going to be sharing most of that in the video today, but I just want to make that clear in case I ever decide to act on this. Um, I have every screenshot that has ever been posted. I have emails. I have email addresses. Um, I have every account that has ever, I, I have all of this saved. Okay. So, I just want to make that clear that I have taken this very seriously for years on end and um, I've really never stood up for myself and I've really never said anything and I'm going to explain to you guys why now I am saying something. So, um, I also said, now this is a very well scripted video because I want to make sure I say everything that I want to say in here. I actually wasn't going to address this for a while. 
Um, and I wasn't. I, I was waiting to kind of sit on this for a little bit. I made my video yesterday and I addressed these issues and I thought, okay, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see if these people, you know, give me a couple days grace. Let's see if they have any kind of empathy or humanity or if they are willing to acknowledge their own wrongs and say, wow, like Peter addressed this again, blah, blah, blah. But no, they didn't do that. Um, they actually doubled down and within hours of me posting my video yesterday, they were uh, posting similar things to what I had addressed in my video yesterday. As if they didn't even hear or see my video when people were tagging them and saying Peter addressed this in his video today and things like that. So it, it's very obvious that they are intent on making my life miserable and trying to discredit me and take me down. Even though I have addressed these things, okay? Even just as of yesterday, within hours of my video being posted, these people were posting things, posting videos, posting uh, tweets and things like that, saying very harsh, nasty statements, okay? Um, also, yesterday in my um, video, one of the negative comments that I got, and like I said, there weren't many, was that when I made the comment that I would come out and share who these people were at some point, um, if I needed to do that, that somebody said that I was, that I was threatening to dox somebody. Okay, let's get this very clear. I have never doxed somebody in my entire career on YouTube. Now, I personally have been doxed many, many times. Okay, and I'm going to get into this in this video today. My family has been doxed. My father has been doxed. Um, you know, my best friend's been doxxed, her place of employment has been doxxed, friends of mine have been doxxed, their volunteer organizations have been doxxed. Many, many times have I been doxxed. I have never doxxed anybody. I do not believe in doxxing anybody, okay? But they are coming for me in a very public manner, on a public platform, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, for anyone to find. So unless what you're afraid of by your comment is that I'm going to be calling you out, okay, then you have nothing to worry about. All right, these people have been extremely intrusive in my life, and for a long time, I haven't said anything or stood up for myself. So don't tell me that I can't protect myself by exposing these people's public social media accounts, okay? Now, they do their work on public social media accounts where they hide behind fake profiles and fake names, okay? And fake YouTube names and things like that. And, um, and we're going to get into more of that in just a second. So I have no problem calling out their public profile, okay? That is not doxing somebody. I have absolutely no problem coming out and addressing their public social media accounts, all right? That is not doxing. So just so you know, let me get in here and I will, uh, for you, uh, go in here and I already got the uh, the definition of doxing for those of you that do not know what doxing is. Hold on a second. Um, da -da -da -da. I have so many um, screenshots and things that I have been going through. Okay, so doxing is the action or process of searching for, searching for, and publishing private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. And what I will be showing to you today is that this is what these people have done to me, okay? Uh, the, uh, what is doxing someone mean? And it says doxing means publishing someone's information online without their per permission, okay? D their, pub their private information, not their public social media accounts that any of you can find out there, okay? Not their, their private or their public social media accounts, their private information. I don't plan to do that. But trust, if I find out their private information and I have people working on it, if I find that out, I will be taking action, okay? Because this has gone too far at this point. And in all honesty, I think it's happened so much to me because it happens on a daily basis that I had kind of become immune to it. And so yesterday I got some comments from fellow YouTubers and they were like, does this really, do these people really like come for you over like a hemp lotion and things like that? And I was like, yeah. And, and I was explaining some other things and, and I'm going to say this in a second, but many of these people that I talked to yesterday and have talked to for, you know, many people in the past have been like, Peter, this is personal. This is a personal vendetta. Like, this is borderline stalker. Like, yes, we all have haters. Yes, we all have people that don't like us on the internet. Okay, we, that's something that goes along with the YouTube thing. We all know that, right? But this is personal, and this is borderline stalkerish harassment, okay? So, I want to get into this video, um, and I wanted to make that clear that that is not what I'm doing, uh, is doxing anybody, okay? And even if I do find their per personal private information, I will be acting on that behind the scenes, okay? I will not be exposing their personal private information as they have done to me, all right? Okay, part of the reason why I haven't really ever addressed this before extensively is because I just thought that this was part of the YouTube deal, like I was just saying, that it went along with the game until 
I started speaking to other YouTubers who had never experienced it on the level that I had before, okay? And, you know, and I talked, or I talk about a lot of YouTubers that um, talk about, like, oh, the haters on YouTube and blah, 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 whatever, or the haters on Twitter and whatever and how toxic, to you know, Twitter is. And so I kind of just thought that this was part of it. Until I started taking a closer look and I started realizing um, the depths that these people have gone to, to kind of infiltrate my life and make my life absolutely miserable. So, and I'm going to be explaining this here in just a second. Um, and, and so these people that I was talking to were like, this is very personal. Okay. This is stalkerish. And this is on a level of harassment that I've never seen before. And anybody that I know that does YouTube has never witnessed before. Okay. So that was at the point that I was kind of like, well, damn, like, I, I, I don't understand. Like I'm confused. Okay. So we all know on YouTube that you're going to get a certain amount of hate, you know, comments and hate tweets and things like that, right? But, like, I'm talking to, and I mean, I'm talking about five or ten different YouTubers that I was talking to. And all of them across the board are saying that they have never experienced anything like this. And that they consider this personal and stalkerish and it's harassment. Wow, like, maybe I need to take a deeper look at this, okay? So who are they? Well, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to say their names yet. Like, I will say, I, I have no problem coming out and sharing their uh, their public social media. And I will, that will be the next move that I make, okay? Um, but I have a pretty good idea who's behind these accounts. So, um, you know, like I said, I have people that are looking into this. And um, I have a pretty good idea of who, of who maybe a few of these people are. Um, you know, you leave... A, a trail like you on the internet and so uh it's not too hard to figure out and so I, I have kind of a good idea um of who some of these people are I, I have no problem with you coming to me and saying to me hey peter like i didn't realize this was affecting you on this level and uh which i don't know how you wouldn't by your actions um but i really need to apologize to you and i need to take responsibility and it will stop and i can tell you i will take no further action okay but if that doesn't happen and I find out who you are personally, trust me, there will be further action, okay? So, um, uh, what I wanted to say is I'm going to group their actions together today, okay? So, when I, like, am talking about all these different people, I would say, you know, this is over the period of the last, I don't know, four or five years. This has been 10 to 15, 20 different accounts, different things like that, where um, they have done certain different things and... I, what I really believe is it's a few people that are acting as many because, like, I'll sit here in a second and explain to you, but, like, many of them, like, follow each other. They respond to each other. They follow the same accounts. Um, I, I just, I have to believe that many of them are, like, one person acting as five. Okay. And then you might ask me, well, then why are you even getting in a video and addressing it? Because you're really only addressing a few people. Well, the problem is, is that even if it's just one person, they are so sick-minded and disgusting that it needs to be addressed, okay? Um, so, uh, what else did I say on this one? Um, so, I'm going to group them all together because I'm not going to go in and say, well, this person said this and this person said that, blah, blah, blah. If I need to in the future with showing factual evidence of the tweets and the videos and the emails that I've been sent and my friends and family have been sent and things like that and the DMs, I have no problem doing that and I will be calling those people out individually at that point. Okay. I'm also not going to address everything because this has been ongoing for years um, and they constantly are tweeting and deleting and things like that. So, I mean, and if you follow these people or if you were to go look at their account, you'd be like, well, Peter, this, the, you can't really show a pattern here. Okay. Well, this is like some of these people have been doing this for years and they leave up a tweet for three weeks and then they delete the tweet and then they have no tweets, no replies or anything. And then they start coming at me again and then they leave those tweets up for, let's say, two to three weeks and then they delete all those tweets. Right. Okay, so, but I've got the, the emails that back this up and track to certain people. I've got the DMs from you guys. I think some people have forgotten that you sent me DMs, okay? Threaten, threatening me, all right, at the time that I was healing from an accident. You guys threatened me. I have those DMs to this day, okay? So, uh, let's not get this twisted. I have my factual evidence to back every single thing of this up, okay? Um, so let's get into what they actually do. They follow me on every social media app and are even members of my book clubs, okay? 
in my Vlogerinos group. Now, I don't run my Vlogerinos group. I know people think that I do, but that is a group of people that watch my vlog. I am not a moderator on that group. I didn't decide who the moderators were on that group. I didn't start that group. I had nothing to do with that group, okay? Yes, I do comment on there. I, I do updates from time to time on there, um, which apparently these people have huge issues with because they'll say, if you're part of the Vlogerinos group, you give private updates from Peter, which is absolutely total nonsense. I don't share anything in there that I wouldn't share with the rest of my YouTube people, okay? But if I'm not going to vlog for a night, yes, I do comment on the Vlogerinos group and say, I'm going to take the day off and not vlog. And then I also try to comment on my community tab as well. But apparently they take huge issue from that. And the only reason that they would know it is because they're in that group, right? Okay. So, um, they do all that. In fact, when I joined Threads, the number one person, the number one person who is leading the pack of all this was literally within like my first 50 followers on, um, on Threads. And I thought, oh, this is rich. She's getting in there right away, right? Like she wants to make sure that she sees everything. She follows me on Instagram. She follows me on Twitter. She, fo she follows me everywhere, okay? And I was like, oh, this is rich. And I almost went in and blocked her. And I was like, okay, no, nope, just leave it. And many of these people I have never blocked. Many of these people, and I know you guys are going to be like, well, you should just block them and move on. Many of these people I have never blocked. Many of these people I haven't because I felt like at times that blocking them would have made it worse because then what they'll come out and say is, oh, you blocked me. Now you you really are pissed because of something that we said and then they'll make more of it out than it is. Now, many of these people I do have blocked, okay? They have followed all of my family members, including my in-laws, okay? My book club partner on social media. So... I had Alex last night because somebody reached out to me and said, do you know that most of these accounts follow your husband, right? So I had Alex go in and look and block these people. Mel, my book club partner, I had already had her block some of these people, okay? And um, when Alex was looking at it, he said, are you aware that they follow my mom? They follow my brother? They follow my brother's wife, my sister-in-law? They follow many of my family members? They follow Alex's aunt? I mean, this is stalkerish behavior, you guys, okay? But wait, it gets better than that. Um, because they also follow, um, and I'm going to get to this in a second. They also follow my doctors. Now, this is pretty scary when you want to talk about this. I have never in one video, not one video, have I ever mentioned my doctor's name, mentioned my doctor's office, okay? Mentioned my, my not, doctor's first name or anything. Never have I ever, okay? Now, I have mentioned things okay, about certain doctors, that they would have to take that information and they would have to go in and do an investigation to figure out who these people are. When I saw that this one account follows my back doctor, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I have never, ever mentioned, I mean, there are a lot of back and spine specialists in Indiana, okay? I don't know how they found out the specific person that I go to, but that is pretty scary, and you are a sick individual, okay? I don't know how you found... I have never mentioned in a video who I go to and whatever, right? I have never said that in a video. I've never said my doctor's name. I've never said where I went to. I don't know what you did. I don't know if you followed me in an Uber there. I don't know if by things that I've said, by being that, you know, this person's a friend of the family, and then you tracked it by... Alex, the friend of ours, because their family lives somewhere else, that you tracked to who it was, and then you tracked it back, and then you looked up that name to find out where they worked, and then you followed them on Twitter. That is so sick and stalkerish, and do not come to me and tell me that this is the same stuff that I do with the people that I talk about on YouTube, because I have never done this, and I will never do this, okay? And I'm going to prove that to you in a second. Okay, uh, so they follow all these people, which I'm going to talk more about, right? By the way, I just want to make this clear. My neighbor's walking by. Hey! <laughs> She's waving at me. You're really animated. I am animated today. I've had it. But anyway, I'll explain it to you in a second. Okay. <laughs> by the way, if you upload clips of my videos, I just want to make this very, very clear. Okay? And you know who you are. All right? If you upload clips of my videos with no commentary... I have every right to copy strike your channel, okay? And to copyright strike that video. A strike to your channel. You get three strikes, your channel will get taken down, okay? I'm making this very, very clear for you. 
so that you can go in and do the work that you need to do. Because there is somebody out there who is uploading clips of my videos and clips of my live streams. And I'm sorry, but putting up a video of me, and I'm going to explain this video clip in just a second, for, but putting up a video clip of me and titling it, Peter is a hypocrite, and it's literally clips of my videos, and you do no commentary on it whatsoever, is not defined by YouTube as fair use. And I can strike that video, and you, I think, have 10 to 15 videos of me up there just doing that. You have no commentary on there whatsoever on your channel, and I can completely strike those videos so I can tell you that if you don't take action quickly that will probably be something that I will be doing in the next couple of days okay for example a lot of people reference me mentioning the hemp products now it was kind of funny because some of the comments that I got yesterday and it was interesting because I talked about it on my vlog as well and so many people were like Peter like why do you even feel the need to talk about this like you don't need to address this like this is ridiculous right but I felt like I needed to because I feel like I need to be transparent on my channel all right I've been transparent about almost everything so far so there's no reason for me not to come out and be transparent about this but it was funny because people were commenting and they were saying Peter um you are because I was talking about being hypocritical because I had forgotten that I'd used the products right okay so people were saying you're hypocritical which I thought was kind of funny right but there were a lot of people that were referencing me mentioning the hemp products and that uh that people were saying that, like, I don't even know why you felt the need to address this. Like, people forget things over time, blah, 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 whatever, right? Okay, so I just want you to know that one of these people, the main people leading the pack, uploaded a video, all right, titled, three days ago, titled, Peter, Mo Peter is a Hypocrite, and it is a video of me just days ago talking to my vlog about how I will never use THC or hemp products, okay? Back with a video from years ago, okay, from years ago, of me showing these hemp products that I bought, all right? Okay. Um, they also uploaded a clip of a live stream, which I addressed in my video yesterday. So let's talk about this live stream clip for a second, right? Now, I was 45 at the time, and I believe that he was 19. He was about 19 and a half, I think, okay? And I jokingly asked if he was a virgin. Now, yesterday I said in my video that no matter what, it wasn't an appropriate joke, okay? And a lot of people were like, Peter, you guys were too consensual adults. Peter, we're not talking about Colleen Ballinger kind of things. Like, it was obvious it was a joke. I went and watched the clip several times. It was obvious it was a joke. I made the joke and I moved on really quick, okay? And it was probably inappropriate and I should have made the joke. Needless to say, people out there like Leonardo DiCaprio, who is 48, older than I was at the time, is dating a 19-year-old, okay? So if you're going to pass judgment on me for making an inappropriate joke with somebody that wasn't a consenting adult at the time, then you should probably pa be passing judgment, not just on me, but if you take issue with this, okay? If this is your issue, then your entire Twitter should be threaded with people talking about Colin Ballinger and people talking about Leonardo DiCaprio, which they're not, and on and on and on. But no, your channel is only dedicated to talking about me, okay? Your Twitter is only dedicated to talking about me. Oh, and body shaming uh, YouTubers like Chantel Foodie Beauty, all right? So let's not get this twisted, okay? So I wonder what their motive was about this. I wonder what their motive was. Now, was their motive to bring attention to the fact that they took a huge issue with this? That they thought that this was really problematic? Now, I said in my video yesterday, and I explained that the reason why I deleted that live stream was because this person, okay, has moved on and is no longer on YouTube. And in fact, I looked, hasn't posted a video in four years, okay? So they have a completely new career, and I did not want them dragged into all of this, and that is why I deleted my live stream. I was not hiding from it, okay? And I'll explain to you in a second the length of me not hiding from it, because I addressed it in my video yesterday, so that proves I wasn't hiding from it, all right? But if your motive was really that you were really concerned with this, my question would be, did you reach out to this person and ask them if they were okay with you consensually showing them at 19 years old in a video um, that you took such issue with and thought was so problematic? Did you reach out to them and ask them if they were okay with you using them as an example? I mean, if you really are worried about them and you're really worried about this, did you reach out to them and ask them? Or was your motive just to take me down and discredit me? Because that's what I believe. Because I did reach out to this person, okay? And I want to read to you um, what I said to this person. Um, and I said to them, hey, long time no talk. So listen, this person is posting these clips of a live stream we did together in 2017 when I jokingly asked if you were a virgin. When it came out, I immediately uh, deleted the live stream because I didn't want you dragged into this, and I even explained that today in a video. I didn't mention your name, but I wanted you to know. I know you've worked really hard in your career, and I don't want any of this to negatively affect that. I just wanted you to hear it from me in case anyone brings it to you. Hope you're doing well. 
okay? And they responded, or, and then I also said, also, I did say in my video today that it was not an appropriate joke, but if you need or want me to take further accountability for it, I'm more than willing to do that. In all honesty, I didn't even remember this conversation in the live stream, but if you do, and in any way, if I made you feel uncomfortable, I deeply apologize and will address this, okay? Now, I've asked them to, if I can share this in a, uh, in a video and they haven't responded yet, but needless to say, the response was that they thought that this was somebody that was really reaching to come for me and that they, that they didn't remember the clip either and that we were two consenting adults having a joke, okay? That was their response to it, just so you know, okay? And I'm not going to read their exact message because, like I said, they haven't responded to me yet. So anyway, um... But what was their motive about it? Did you reach out to this person? Now, this person's name was on the live stream, okay? My, my live stream title at that time that they took the clip from it said live stream with this person, okay? You can still find this person out there, all right? So don't tell me that you couldn't have reached out to them and asked them like I did about it. So what was your motive, okay? If you really cared about this person, you really cared about the situation of what had happened, why wouldn't you reach out to them? Or was your motive just to use them to discredit me and harm me further? That's really sick, okay? That's really sick-minded. They follow any organization that I have participated in, okay? I mean, they follow... <laughs> I judged the Miss Indiana organization pageant years ago. They follow everybody that has to do with that organization. In fact, they follow everybody that has anything to do with pageants and even tag people in it. They even tagged uh, the other day uh, one of my very best friends, Brittany Mason, who was a Miss Indiana USA. I don't know if they're aware of this or not. They could find this if they looked on my uh, in my Instagram. Uh, but she married my husband and I, okay? She's one of our dearest friends. She married us. She officiated our marriage, okay? She is fully aware of the tweets that I said about Miss Indiana and... Uh, and the Miss Texas back in the day. I am not proud of those tweets, okay? I said it four years ago, I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. I am not proud of those tweets. Those tweets were disgusting, okay? So I don't know why you guys, these people are, I mean, they follow Rev. So I went to Rev, an event here in Indianapolis to kick off the Indianapolis 500. They follow Rev. They follow the Indianapolis 500 Speedway, where it happened, okay? They follow the MC of the Miss Indiana organization, they follow my doctors. They follow my family members. Okay. They follow my friends. They follow my book club partner. They follow like all, I mean, it is so bizarre, you guys, when you see the people that they follow. I mean, it is disgusting. All right. They watch every second of every video and bring up 10 second clips of something I said years ago, most of which I don't even remember, okay? And I have said many times in videos that if you wanna go back and find discrepancies in things that I say in my videos, you will find them. I have said this many, many times in my videos, okay? I've said it just recently in my vlogs. And if you've heard me say it, please sound off in the comment section below and say, yep, Peter, I've heard you say that. And I've said it. If you wanna go back and you wanna say, well, Peter, on June 1st of 2018, you said dot, 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 but today you said this and you're a hypocrite, but you're going to find that, okay? I'm just going to tell you right now, you're going to find that. You're going to find those discrepancies and that's going to make me look like the hypocrite of the world and maybe I am, okay? And maybe I am or maybe I changed my mind or maybe I need to take a look at that, all right? But I don't even remember half this crap that they pull out that I said five years ago in a vlog. I literally push record and say, hello, hello, hello. And I end it an hour later and I vlog every single day. You think I remember things I said five years ago in videos? I'm telling stories of my life, okay? You tell the same story of your life over and over and over again and see if you get it correctly. I'll tell you what my good Judy Tani Jean says. People that tell the same story the same way twice are liars. Nobody tells the same story of their life the same way every single time. If they do, they're liars. So heated about this. For example, okay, and this was last night. This was me giving them an opportunity to show, okay, maybe these people are a little human. Maybe they can grow a little bit. For example, just yesterday, they posted a picture um, from 2016. This is them coming for my sobriety, but I just want to make this clear because I made it very clear recently that I do not wear any t-shirts or any clothing or anything that is that is representative of a lifestyle of alcoholism, weed, pills, things like that. Okay, so what did they throw up on their Twitter last night? A picture from 2016 where my husband and I were part of a New Year's party that was sponsored by Ciroc Vodka. Here, I'm going to show you the picture, okay? Now, I have been kind enough, um, unlike them, to take their name. I edited the picture so that uh, their name is not on the picture. So here you can see it, okay? 
This is a picture of my husband and I. And you can see that down here it says, Ciroc New Year's Party, okay? And in the corner it says that it was sponsored by Ciroc, okay? We were hosting this New Year's Party. So they want to use that as an example of me endorsing alcohol. I didn't set up this party. We were the guests there. I didn't ask Ciroc. I didn't call Ciroc up. They used my picture on that ad. That was an ad that my husband and I, we did not put together, that they sent us. Okay, and this is your example, and what they said with it was, another example, uh, wait, I can tell you exactly what they said, because I have it screenshot right here, hold on just a second. What did they say in this? They said, um, hold on just a second, let me pull it up so I give you factual evidence of what they said. The camera stopped. What did they say? A picture of Peter Mon not endorsing alcohol, according to him, okay? They pulled that from 2016. 2016. To prove a point about me saying I don't wear clothing and I don't endorse a lifestyle of alcohol, okay? So let me take accountability for that, all right? I made it very, very clear that I do my best to not endorse a lifestyle of addiction when I am a person in recovery today. In 2016, my husband and I co-hosted a Ciroc Vodka New Year's Eve party. I apologize for the negligence on not knowing that or remembering that little bit of the information. Needless to say, I have mentioned in many, many vlogs, and sound off below if you remember this as well, how my husband and I have hosted many, many events, and at the end of the event, they will hand us an entire huge bottle of Grey Goose or absolute vodka or whatever, okay, which I want no part of whatsoever and ends up in our garage and is a gift to other people that my husband gives them, all right? I have also mentioned recently uh, that just the other day, okay, just the other day that during Pride Day and things like that, when we have done events with people, that they will give us like absolute uh, vodka Pride t-shirts and I don't wear them, okay? So I'm so over this and people wanting to come for my recovery. You know, that is so sick. I share my recovery story to help even just one person out there. And every time that I say, if you're sober, whether you're sober an hour or 300 days or 300 years, sound off in the comment section below. The amount of people, the sober family, and the people that it inspires to continue to get sober in the comments of my videos is overwhelming. And that is so cool, okay? And that is not because of me. But I share my story of recovery to plant the seed so that somebody else out there one day might think, if Peter can do it, if all these people in his comment sections can do it, maybe I can do it too. How dare you use that and weaponize that against me? You are a sick and twisted, disgusting person. You need help. Seriously, okay? So let's go on. They lie regularly. They say I think say things like they'll say if I say one thing in a video like if I say um, if I said to this person the other day um, well uh, like are you a, a virgin jokingly and we move right on which you can see in the clip they'll say I've asked multiple people that and I've said it time and time again which is a complete fabricated absolute lie and I have proof to that okay uh, they say that I never address statements which is untrue and I prove that. They even say things as untrue, and this, this I just want you to know, takes away your credibility from all of your other statements. Somebody the other day commented to me and said, I just want to say, I know this is kind of like weird or whatever they said, but like they tweeted me and said, I just want to say how like beautiful your eyes look in this picture. And this person commented back to them, this, this loses you complete credibility, I just want you to know. And I know it's so simple, but it's a simple thing like this that completely loses you credibility. When drama channels are forced to come out and we are forced to correct ourselves, but you never do, okay? This person came out and said, Peter has mentioned several times in several videos that he wears blue eye, blue contacts. I, I've never said that in a video. I've never said that. And I just mentioned this in my vlog yesterday. I don't wear blue contacts. Hey, listen, do you? Okay, wear orange contacts, purple contacts, blue contacts. I don't care what kind of color contacts you wear, but I don't wear blue contacts. I wear contacts. I wear AccuView view, view contacts, okay, but I don't wear blue contacts. My mother had extremely blue eyes. My father had extremely blue eyes. I've talked about that in videos. Maybe that's what you're getting confused. And it's interesting to me that you can quote all these things that I didn't say in videos, but then you use a five-second clip of mine from years ago where I'm showing a hemp's lotion, okay? So why don't you get your facts correct if you're going to come for me and try to discredit me, all right? They body shame others, of which I have evidence of, and they make horrible statements about other people, all while saying that I'm a horrible person. And trust me, okay, when I come out, if I have to, and talk about these people and show their public profiles, you'll be astounded that they have the nerve to come for me and say that I'm saying horrible things about people and saying that I'm a hypocrite. 
when they are absolutely hypocrites and saying horrible things about people, and I have evidence to back it up, okay? So delete all your tweets you want, okay? But I got all the evidence from years, okay? They made comments that we had our, okay, this was one of the sickest things that ever happened, and I addressed this a couple years ago, but I'm gonna say it again. They, addre they addressed, uh, or hold on a second, they made comments that we had our dog, Pee Pee, put to sleep, before, like when he was sick, okay? So that we could go on a trip to Mexico. A trip that after our dog passed away, we almost didn't even go on, okay? Because we were so distraught that my husband was like, we were sitting here with Boo, Boo and Tucker and Alex was like, I can't stay in this house without PP being here. Like, I have got to get out of this house. So whether we go to Mexico or whether we go somewhere, I, have, I can't, I can't be here anymore. And this was his dog, okay? That he brought in the relationship. And he was like, I, I have to get out of this house. I cannot bring, I cannot be here anymore. Without this. That is why we went to Mexico, okay? That was not a fun trip for us. You know, I mean, I sat outside on the patio and I watched video after video of like, you know, what, what happens to dogs when they die and like, is there an afterlife for dogs? And my husband is crying and people are, and listen, and people were so gracious and kind. I mean, a, so many people just poured out overwhelming amounts of love and, and that was what was so helpful. But there were a few people out there that were so sick and twisted. People even contacted our vet. I got a call from my vet. I've never mentioned this before. I got a, a call from my vet and somebody said that they were reaching out to find out what our dog had died from. You want to talk about, that is sick, okay? That is absolutely effing sick. When I had shared extensively that our dog had heart disease and ki was in kidney failure from the medicine that he was on. I shared extensively about that. I shared extensively about Tucker's medical issues. You are, that is so sick. You contacted our vet. Oh wait, but it gets better than that, okay? They threatened to expose me for uh, smoking cigarettes. Now this is so stupid, but whatever. They threatened to expose me for smoking cigarettes in Florida, which I addressed at length on Twitter, and even threatened me for not being on social media after my accident. If I read to you guys these DMs that this gal sent me, okay, after my accident, oh, you're hiding out, and blah, 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 what I was literally healing from an accident, okay? And this person is like threatening me in DMs. And yes, I still have your DMs even though you want to use me to come for other people. You want to use me as an example. And you want to say nice little things. Oh no, sweetie, I figured you out a long time ago. And yes, I have those DMs. And yes, they are threatening and they are harassing. Okay? And I still have them to this day. Just so you know. And the cigarette situation, just so y'all know, I smoke a good cigarette from uh, time to time. My husband smokes nicotine vapes. He loves them. And I do too every once in a blue moon. Okay, so don't get it twisted. I'm a 51-year-old man, and if I want to smoke a cigarette from time to time, I'm going to smoke a good cigarette from time to time. So if you see a picture of me smoking a cigarette, I deeply apologize that you can't handle that. Okay? Just to make that clear, I addressed that years ago. I'm going to address it again. All right? Several of them regularly throw up my accident in my face when it was ruled a medical emergency. I had not had a seizure. I have had one seizure pre previous to this, okay? One seizure. I hadn't had a seizure in 23 years, okay? I was cleared to drive by my neurologist, and I was also cleared to drive by the state of Indiana, all right? Now, it was found by the police to be a medical emergency based on my medical records, the EMT, and the police at the site, okay? And the fact that I didn't just have one seizure that day, I had two seizures that day. I do not love talking about this accident out of respect for the people that were involved and their family members. I don't think it's fair to them. I've made that very, very clear. So when you guys use this to weaponize me, what you're really doing is hurting these other people. I want you to know that. And I've tried really hard to not bring it up in videos and not discuss it. I think I've done a pretty good job of that, okay? In fact, I was asked to be on a podcast to discuss the uh, at length a, a podcast that would probably bring me pretty good attention and might be good for my channel and my career. And I said, absolutely not. I stated I am not going to talk about this and I'm not going to talk about it at length. And this person like really wanted me to talk about it and said, I think that your audience would want to know more about it. I said, no, out of respect for the family, I've made it very, very clear. I'm not going in to talk about this at length anymore. Okay. But you guys want to use this and weaponize it against me and say that I had no business driving. Epileptics drive. I don't know if you don't know that, but epileptics that are cleared to drive by their doctors and the state that they live in, they drive, okay? A lot of epileptics drive. Especially epileptics that hadn't had seizures in 23 years. Do you know what it is like? Just put yourself in my shoes for a second. Do you know what it is like 
To be the person that was driving a car in that situation and live with that every single day and go through extensive therapy and have that in your head every single day. And I will have it in my head every single day for the rest of my life. Every single day I will live with that, okay? As will their family, as will their friends that I feel horrible about. To then have that thrown up in my face and weaponized against me, you are a sick, sick person out there, okay? Sick. They have contacted my best friend's place of employment. They have doxxed me. They have doxxed my best friend's business records. That's why Tanya won't do videos anymore, okay? Because they threw up her tax records and all kinds of things. She's like, I'm not being in videos anymore. This is not fun for me anymore, okay? They posted pictures of me body shaming me standing in my kitchen when I was heavier. They've called my friend's volunteer organizations about my boarding my dog at my best friend's kennel. So let me just put this into perspective for you. They emailed um, an organization that my friend Melissa works for. Okay, she works for a, a dog rescue. They emailed her director and they said, are you aware that Melissa's friend Peter boards his elderly dog? Boo Radley at the time had just turned 13. Okay, his elderly dog at a kennel. This is not healthy for him. Okay, my best friend owns my dog kennel. Okay. She takes, and she was so offended by this because Tanya got an email as well. They emailed Tanya as well. They emailed my husband. They emailed me, all of us, okay? Tanya was like, the fact that this person, number one, is questioning my ability as a kennel owner is disgusting. Number two, Boo Radley and all of your dogs have been like family to me. I take care of them like family. They run around my office. She was like, I treat them just like family, and you know that. And that is disgusting that somebody would say that. Somebody reached out to that. They also emailed my vet about that. You know, I mean, like, give me a break, you guys, okay? So, um, they have also contacted many of my family members, many of which, you know, on Alex's side of the family are Spanish-speaking as their primary language, and they have said I've said things in vlogs which are completely untrue, and so then my family is confused, and they're like, well, what did you, we don't understand what this, this message means, and I have to explain it to them, and then Alex has to get involved, and his mom has to get involved, and things like that, right? Like, they've caused a lot of family issues. It's disgusting, all right? They've even doxxed an Airbnb that I was staying at in Florida a few years ago. Now, I was filming videos within two days of us staying at this Airbnb in Fort Lauderdale because of, I guess, pictures of where we were staying, the pool. They had gotten on Airbnb, looked up this house, found the house, and doxed my location of where I was staying and showed the house online. This is the links that these people go to, okay? Yet they state that I come for people and call people out. Well, maybe I do, but at least I get on a video and show my face, okay? I don't hide behind fake names and I don't hide behind fake profiles and I don't go to the links that you guys go to and I'm going to prove that in a second and I never have, okay? I don't do that to the people I talk about. I have never contacted their family members or friends or places they work or collaborate with. The only family member I have ever reached out to, okay, the only family member I have ever reached out to of a YouTuber that I have talked to is John Hill, the ex-husband of Jacqueline Hill. So let me share with you, here you can see, okay, that I reached out to John Hill on April 29th of 2019, and I said, hey John, I know you have no idea who I am, but I am a YouTube drama channel and have made many videos about you and Jacqueline, even one today, but I try to always be fair and kind. Anyway, I've been sober 24 years and active in recovery. I just want to send you some positivity and encouragement. I have friends who have relapsed 20 to 30 times and now have over 20 years sober. I myself went to five treatments before I got it. You can do this. Your honesty and vulnerability is encouraging. I know you don't know me, but if you ever need any help or suggestions privately, of course, feel free to reach out. Sobriety can be a bitch, but recovery has been the greatest gift I've ever been given. I wish you all the best. Much love, Peter. These are not the kind of messages that these people are reaching out and contacting my family about. I just want to make that very, very clear, okay? Um, I have never contacted their sponsors or companies that they work with, something that we get accused of all the time. I've never done that. I would never do that. I would never take somebody's coin from them, okay? I have never, ever, never contacted their friend's place of employment, vets, or doctor's offices. The majority of the people that I discuss, I don't even follow on social media. I don't follow Trisha. I don't follow Shane. I don't follow jo uh, Jeffrey. I don't follow Colleen. I don't follow Manny. I don't follow most of these people. I don't follow James Charles. I don't follow most of these people. And I definitely do not follow their family members, okay? 
I often say I hope they grow and change for the better and that they can be and that can be evidence in many of my videos where I have said about the people that I'm talking about. I just wish that they would take accountability and grow and change and become better human beings. I've said that in many of my videos. That is my motive, okay, for what I want for these people. I have even had someone reach out to me years ago and said that even though my videos were fair, that was their words, not mine, that they asked me if they would if I would stop making videos about them. And since that day, I have never once made a video about that person since, okay? If you don't think I have a right to stand up for myself, you are crazy. What y'all are doing is harassment defined by the state of Indiana, where I live, and by internet law. It is unlawful to email my vet. Hold on a second. I want to get into uh, these definitions, of inter uh, just so you know, which I already knew because I've already talked to an attorney about this, but just so you know. Uh, Article 45, Offenses Against Public Health Order and Decency Chapter, Stalking Harassment, defined in the state of Indiana. As used in this chapter, harassment means conduct directed towards a victim that includes, but is not limited to, repeated or continuing impermissible contact that would cause a reasonable person to suffer emotional distress. And that actually causes the victim to suffer emotional distress. Harassment does not include statutory or constitutionally protected activity, okay? Now, when you go into internet law and you talk about it, because I can cover by both, it says harassment is generally defined as a repeated pattern, which I have proof of in evidence, a behavior intended to scare, harm, anger, or shame, shame, a targeted individual. Online harassment means those actions occur using digital technologies such as social media platforms, email, or messaging services, all of which I have evidence of. And it goes in and it shows examples of this. Now, I have examples in my videos where I can say about every person I've ever talked about. Shane Dawson, Trisha Paytas, Jacqueline Hill, James Charles, all of them. I can say, even Colleen Ballinger, that I hope that they're getting the help that they need and I hope that they change and grow as human beings. Can you say that? Have you ever said that in a tweet or a video? No, you haven't, okay? You have totally done everything that you have done with the purpose of shaming me and putting me down, okay? So let's go in here and further talk about this, right? Okay. It is unlawful to email my vet... Dox my friend's place of employment. You've also doxed my past place of employment and contacted them, which I had to deal with. Okay, that I haven't worked for in 15 years. All right. Okay. Um, you've made online threats via tweets and DMs and emails. You have, uh, by making defamatory or untrue statements, which has caused me emotional distress. I have actually, I've had my previous therapist and my therapist now who have both told me that they would attest legally to the fact that I have experienced emotional distress, to the fact that people have threatened me about my accident, questioned my sobriety, contacting my friends, employers, and family members, making untrue statements or continuing to bring up issues, which I've already addressed, questioning whether or not we put a dog down to go on vacation, which brought my husband a lot of emotional distress okay and so much more that I haven't even discussed but I can get into in a further video that's not been 46 minutes long so far um, and then I have uh, absolute evidence of, and it's brought me emotional distress every single day for years on end and I rarely ever even mention it to the point where I thought about just walking away from YouTube but I'm not willing to give up something that I love okay now I don't expect that this will stop anything and they will continue to come for me. I am totally aware of this. But I'm not going to stop either, okay? And it won't intimidate me into stopping holding your favorite YouTubers accountable um, and hoping that they make changes and grow as human beings as people. Because that is my ultimate wish for these people that I discuss. My, n my two motives are, number one, to bring attention to the consumer that these people dole their products out to so that the people that know who they are are really, they know what they're buying, Okay. Number two, and I'm transparent, so if you're buying a cameo from me, or you're watching my videos, or you're supporting me, which I appreciate, thank you, I think I'm pretty transparent and you know what I'm about. Unlike these other people that I've addressed multiple times a lot of issues that they have never addressed or taken accountability for in any kind of shape or form, in a video, a tweet, whatever, okay? So, uh, that, but I've also, uh, my second motive is that I wish that they would change and grow as human beings because I think that they would enjoy their life more, okay? So I just want to say that. Oh, and there's one last message that I want to read to you. And this is actually for those of you out there that enjoy my videos. Um, oh, th this is this a nice tweet. So, Peter, did you start your sobriety date over from the day you finished your prescription painkillers after your dental surgery? That I talked about at length in my vlog and how scared I was about getting hooked on painkillers and that my uh, doctors were involved with my sponsor and my husband and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Wow. P videos like Peter Mon's vlog proves he has absolutely no interest in getting control of his weight. That he is only paying lip service to making the changes he needs to make to get in shape or get healthy. Because if he were serious, the way he advocates 12-step programs, he would join OA. 
Body shaming me much? Okay. So this is for all of you guys out there that enjoy my videos, and I appreciate that. I love you guys. Now, I don't refer to you guys as stands or fans. I just refer to you as, um, I'm a dude with the camera, and you guys are people that like to watch it, and I appreciate it, you know? But this person refers to you as stands, and they said just last night, okay? This was at 2.43 a.m. last night. This is after I had already come out and addressed all this yesterday. Peter Mon stands are the goofiest people I have come across on social media. I don't really like saying this, but I think it applies. Seriously, go out and touch grass. It's not normal to idolize a stranger on YouTube to the degree you all do. Which, by the way, your language, interestingly enough, sounds like somebody else I know. But, I just want to say to you... It's not normal to pick through people's videos from five years ago to prove that I'm a hypocrite because I used a lotion. You are sick and you need help. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. Thank you guys for listening to a very lengthy video. I feel better having gotten that out. I appreciate it. If I have to come out and talk about it again, I will. But until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow.